everyone, I'm Visha and I'll be your Sec 3 Additional Math Snap Pass Tutor. Today we'll be looking at quadratic functions. This is something that you've already learned in Sec 2 because of how you've learned how to solve quadratic equations through factorization and also the quadratic formula. So for all the lessons, we will have our learning objectives first. So in the learning objectives, you'll be able to see the outline of what we'll be going through in our lesson. And after which, for each of the subtopic in our learning objective, we will have three examples, level one, level two, and level three, based on their difficulty level. And we'll go through each of the examples so that you would have a very clear idea on how to do all these questions in different complexity. When we have a quadratic function, it will be in the shape of a parabola. So a parabola is basically a curve. When we have a curve, we actually have a smiley face and we have a sad face. So when we have a smiley face, as I mentioned, you would have a minimum point. And when I have a sad face, I would actually have a maximum point. So as I've mentioned earlier, when we have a quadratic function because of how we have these two types of curves, there must be an easy way, right? You'll be wondering, there must be an easy way as to which we identify whether this equation has a maximum point or whether this equation has a minimum point. So when the coefficient of x squared is actually greater than zero, what happens is that the function will actually have a minimum point. So what do I mean by that? So for example, if I have a quadratic function 2x squared plus 6x plus 8, what happens here is because of how the coefficient of x squared is actually equals to 2, so a is equals to 2, this means that it is greater than 0. And because of how this is greater than 0, your graph would be a positive graph and you will have a happy face. So usually when you're positive, you will actually be very happy and you will smile. So it will be a happy face. So when you have a happy face, as you can see, you would have a minimum point. So this is what we have here. When we have our minimum point here, how do we identify what is this point and how do we actually make sense of it? So when we have it in our completed square form, which is a bracket x plus h whole thing square, plus k, we can actually identify our minimum point from here. So what is our minimum point here? Our minimum point here is actually negative h and k. So if my completed square is 2 bracket x plus 3 whole thing square plus 4, what happens here is that the coefficient of my x squared, a is actually 2. 2, since 2 is actually a positive value, this means that my whole function is positive and this will have a minimum point. And my minimum point is negative h and k. So my negative h here would be the number in the bracket with my x. So h is actually 3, then you put a negative here. So I have negative 3 and my k will be a so over here, my minimum point would be negative 3 and a 4. So that would actually be my minimum point. The factor, the number here actually does not affect your minimum or maximum point at all. It is just to describe whether this function will have a minimum or will whether it will have a maximum point. So when the coefficient of x squared is negative, that means your a is less than 0, this means that my function will have a maximum point and that would be the second type of curve that we have. So when I have a function, for example, let's say I have negative 3x squared plus 4x plus 5, this function actually has a negative a value. So when my a is equal to negative 3, that means this is less than 0, it is negative. So when you feel negative emotions, you will have a sad face because you'll feel upset, you'll feel annoyed, angry, you'll have a frowning face. So when I have a sad face, I will have a maximum point here. So for this kind of questions, what you have to do is you have to draw it out for yourself so that you'll be able to identify whether it's maximum or minimum point. So with math, you try not to actually memorize everything. Try to leave some of it to your own interpretation. Try to make it easy for you to understand. Just like what I did. When I think about positive values, I think that it's happy face, 
I smile, I have a minimum point. When I feel sad, I frown, this means I will have a maximum point. These are some tips as to which you can actually make it easier for you to remember math. You don't have to memorize every single thing because of how it can be very overwhelming for you and the content might be very, very large. So since we have a negative value here and we have a maximum point, to identify what are the point exactly, it is the same thing as we did earlier. So if I have a function, if I factorize and complete the square for whichever quadratic function, I will, for example, have negative, let's say I have negative 3, x minus 5 whole thing square minus 7. Let's say this is my completed square equation. Over here, since I have a to b, less than zero, this means that I have a maximum point. And what is my maximum point? Once again, it would be minus h and k. It will be the same thing. But when you sketch your graph, the thing is that the shape will not be the same because of how you still have your intercepts which affect the shape of the graph. So this is something that we will look later. Now it may not make as much sense, but once you start sketching the graph, you'll be able to understand why, even though it's the same thing, negative h and k, the graph shape will actually look different. So here, for this specific completed square equation, my maximum point would be negative h. So negative h will be negative negative 5, and then k would be minus 7. So when I expand this negative out, I would have 5 and minus 7. Over here, we have the quadratic function y equals 2x squared minus 2x minus a. We need to write it in the form of our completed square, which is a bracket x plus h squared plus k, or it's minus h squared. And we need to find the maximum or minimum point of this function. So what they want you to do here is complete the square and they want you to identify what is your minimum or maximum value. So in this case, we can straight off identify whether this specific quadratic function has a minimum or maximum point. So my coefficient of x squared here is a positive one. So since a is equals to a positive one, it is greater than zero. This means that it's a positive function. You would have a smiley face and you will have a minimum point. So you will have a minimum point. You will not have a maximum point. So now let's look at how we can complete the square. This is the most basic kind of completing the square. So this should be very easy for you. We have x squared minus 2x minus 8. So when I complete the square, I have x squared minus 2x. I have to divide the coefficient of x by 2. So the coefficient of x here is a negative 2. I have negative 2 divided by 2. And then I have to square this coefficient. Since I added this specific term into the equation, I need to subtract it out of the equation so that I can balance the entire thing. So I have minus 8. I minus negative 2 over 2 whole thing squared. So here, I will get to group my square terms together. So I'll have x, I'll have minus 1 because negative 2 divided by 2, I will get a negative 1. So I have minus 1 whole thing squared. I have minus 8 and negative 1 whole thing squared, I will actually get positive 1. So I have minus positive 1 here. So when I simplify this, I will actually get x minus 1 whole thing square minus 9. This is my quadratic function. So as I've mentioned earlier, since a is equals to 1, it is greater than 0, this entire function will have a minimum point. So we have a minimum point here. And to identify our minimum point, our minimum point is actually equals to negative h and k. So when I have negative h, negative h is the negative value of what's in the bracket. So the bracket over here, I have negative 1. So negative of negative 1, I will get a positive 1, which is positive 1 here. And my k term will be the exact same value here, which is a negative 9. So the minimum value of this specific question is actually 1, 
and negative 9, 1 being our x coordinate of the turning point and negative 9 being the y coordinate. So this is the end of level 2 example 2. This is a slightly tedious question as we can see because of how we need to complete the square. So when we complete the square, first we need to identify the coefficient of x square because when we identify the coefficient of x square, we'll be able to see whether this function has a minimum or maximum point. So for this specific function, we were able to identify that this has a minimum point because of how the coefficient of x square, which is a equals to 1 is positive, it is greater than 0, therefore it has a minimum point. And then once we are able to complete the square, the rest of the question would be very simple because of how we just need to identify our minimum or maximum value which is negative h and k. So negative h would be our x coordinate which is the value inside the bracket and k would be the constant outside the bracket. So usually in exam, what they will do is they will actually give you a standard quadratic function. They will ask you to complete the square and then they will ask you to sketch your graphs. So now for this specific section, what we'll do is we'll look at how we can actually sketch our graph. I'll show you two ways as to which we can sketch our graph. So the first one would be in the standard form. And then I'll also show you how to sketch the graph when it's in the completed square form.